There is a power for good in the universe greater than you are, and you can use it. The Institute of Religious Science presents its dean and founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, world-renowned author, philosopher, and spiritual leader. Every Sunday, Dr. Holmes brings you this radio ministry to show you how you can use the power for good in the universe to enjoy greater happiness, peace, and security through this thing called life. Friends, once again, we welcome you to this radio ministry conducted by one of the great spiritual leaders of our times, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Today, Dr. Holmes will speak to you on one of his favorite themes, how to pray effectively. In this transcribed talk, Dr. Holmes shows you how to use faith through prayer, how to use the power which is greater than you are, consciously, definitely, and for specific purposes. Dr. Holmes has something important to say to you in this inspiring message today. So listen with open heart and mind as he tells you how you can invoke the divine law of good through the power of faith and affirmative prayer to bring you the joy and happiness, peace and security you desire through this thing called life. Friends, throughout the ages, prayers have been answered. And we all believe in faith. What we want to discuss today is how to use faith, how through affirmative prayer to use a power greater than we are, the power of this thing called life. We want to know how to use it consciously and definitely and for specific purposes. Prayer, which is the desire to reach out to something greater than we are, has been common to every age. Instinctively, we feel that there is a higher power that responds to us. And it is natural for us to reach out from our ignorance to its enlightenment, from our weakness to its strength, from our darkness to its light. Faith not only lays hold of a power that actually exists, Faith causes this power to respond as though it were a law operating for us. All who have had faith in this power have received an answer from it. And everyone who has practiced faith knows this. And no matter what our mistakes may have been, we need not carry them along with us. If in crossing a street we have fallen into a mud puddle, no doubt we have gotten a bit smeared. But whoever told us we had to stay in the mud puddle or that we had to be pulled out in some peculiar manner in order to land safely on the sidewalk, didn't we just crawl out as best we could? Maybe some kind stranger got us by the coat collar and lifted us out. Well, God bless him. We only hope that if someday when we are crossing the same corner, this man maybe would have slipped, we shall have the grace to grab him by the collar and drag him to the curb. No, this thing called life will never ask what you have been doing or what mistake you have made or how good or how bad you have been. Jesus said that when you ask believing, life will give you what you ask for. These words are so simple that we overlook their meaning. Something greater than I am. Something bigger. Something I can come to. And something that will listen. Something that understands. Something that will answer. And now let us talk about the Lord's Prayer. The greatest prayer ever uttered. The prayer of Jesus, when he said, Our Father, which art in heaven. Jesus already had told his disciples that heaven was within them. It is this Father within us who doeth the work. We have no power of ourselves alone. Just as an electric generator 
has no power of itself, but is merely an instrument through which a power that is caught from nature works. This is the relationship you and I have to God. Of ourselves we can do nothing, but the Father can do anything. Our Father which art means the power that is. And our Father which art in heaven means that this power is within us. It is accessible to us. Our Father within us, within our heaven, is ever flowing out through us directing our thoughts and acts, guiding us lovingly, kindly, and surely to peace, to happiness, and to success in living. Jesus said, if you ask your father for bread, he will not give you a stone. Shall we not then ask for the bread of life and for the water of the Spirit? Shall we not drink from that well within us which has its source in the eternal fountain of all life, the everlasting spring of our own being, the ocean of everything that lives? We already are in it, but we haven't quite known this. To discover this kingdom within us, this is the greatest discovery that we can ever make. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus not only placed the kingdom of heaven within us, its name was hallowed or holy. To him, as it should be to all of us, we should all have a deep reverence for the presence of God within us and within each other. Thy kingdom come. We can accept or we can reject this kingdom, but the kingdom will never reject us. The very moment we accept it, it accepts us. And this is why Jesus told us to believe in this kingdom. And our kingdom is a kingdom of faith, a kingdom of acceptance and cooperation, kingdom of love and joy of happiness and success. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Being creations of God, his will for us could not be anything other than to express himself through us. And if God is perfect, and who could doubt this, then God could not desire anything for us other than perfection. The will of God for us uh, must be joy and peace, happiness and abundance, health and love, and every other good thing that we have ever dreamed of. If we are children of God, and if we are like him in nature, then we may know that he could not desire us to be unhappy or sick or afraid or impoverished. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The earth belongs to God. Everything in it is controlled by him. The kingdom of God on earth is just as real as the kingdom of God in heaven because heaven is here when we see it. This kingdom of heaven includes our physical bodies our physical environment, and everything that we are doing that is good and right and just. Give us this day our daily bread. It is God who gives. We are the ones who receive. And isn't this true of all life? Nature gives us seed time and harvest sunshine and rain and the fruit of the vine. If God gives, why then have we not received? The trouble must be with us and not with God. Day by day, God is giving us everything we need, the gifts of peace, of joy and happiness. And give us this day 
our daily bread. Not tomorrow, not by and by, but in this very moment in which we are living. And our daily bread means whatever we need, whenever we need it, wherever we need it, and for as long as we need it. We should not limit God's giving to any particular channel, for God can open up channels in our experience every day and new and better ones. So let's expect that every day everything we need will be given us. Whatsoever we need to know, we shall know. That whatever we ought to do, we shall be impelled to do. That even any little bit of information we ought to have, we shall find. Always guided by an unerring divine instinct within us. And so with utmost simplicity and with complete directness, let us believe that the gift of God is made today. This is God's day. Let us live in it as though it were. And now the next passage in this famous prayer is, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We could not expect the universe to make an exception for our little individual case. We could not expect to say, I shall enjoy the love of God, but I will not share it with others. You see, it is only as we share that we really possess. It is only as we seek the greatest good for all that we can hope to experience that same good in our own individual lives. And as we feel close to God, so must we feel close to everyone and everything, for God is all in all. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Spirit could not lead us into temptation. Therefore, God must deliver us from evil, just as light delivers us from darkness. Love alone is supreme over hate. And all the evils of yesterday are canceled out if today we enter into goodness and beauty and peace. No matter what happened yesterday, today we can readjust ourselves to good and to the kingdom of God, and it will come into our experience today. We need no longer worry over the evils of yesterday or over the fears of tomorrow. For if we are whole and happy in this present hour, the next hour will take care of itself. No burdens to drag out of the past, no burdens to carry into the future. Today is God's day. So let us live in it with joy. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This kingdom, this power and this glory never change. The truth is forever established, eternal in its infancy, eternal in its maturity. It knows no decay. We must believe that the gift of life already is an accomplished fact. And we must have faith that God will meet all our needs right where we are. And since believing is only the starting point, we must begin to formulate our prayers, our affirmations, our meditations in such a way as to make it possible for the law of good to produce the desired result in our experience. This each must do for himself although in doing it with others he will be helped, for the faith of one is added to the faith of another. In this way an atmosphere of conviction is generated which uplifts and strengthens each of us. True prayer is both an art and a science. It is an art 
in that it is a thing of feeling, a science, in that it deals with definite law. Let us combine this inward feeling, this testimony of the heart, with our conscious appreciation of what we are doing and how to do it. And in order to be sure that we actually prove our position, let's all pray definitely for ourselves and for others until something actually transpires in our experience. This is exactly what we would do if we were dealing with any other law in nature, and the faith generated through prayer acts actually as a law, for there really is a law of faith. But when we arrive at faith, we arrive at it only through conviction, and we must be certain that we are convinced, and we will be convinced when we understand that we are dealing with a power greater than we are. There is a law of good available to everyone, just as all other laws in nature are available to everyone. Experience alone will prove this, but you will be experimenting with the greatest law of life, the law of your relationship to God. God the living present in everything and in everyone. You should enter into this experiment with joy and with enthusiastic expectancy, for you are dealing with the final and absolute power in the universe, and it is a power of good. Remain steadfast, then, in your conviction, and you will win. You will win. Because God cannot fail. Learn daily to commune with this spirit within and around you until the act is spontaneous and real and happy. And so shall the mind of man, seeing thy flight, find out the way again. There in the night. Friends, I want to read you a few lines from a letter we received recently from Fresno, which says, God bless you and your message. And do you mind if I insert an ad in the local newspaper regarding your broadcasts? I want everyone to hear them. If the letters from your air congregation mean so much to you, Perhaps you can better understand what your home study course means to us. For they are water to the thirsty and food to the hungry. Well, I want to thank the person who wrote this letter. I think it is very wonderful. And I know that all of us are grateful that the writer wishes to place a special advertisement in a local paper so that more people can hear these broadcasts of ours. And here is a lesson for all of us. How is it that we shall multiply our effort a hundred times? Really, all it would take to do this is for everyone who listens to tell all the people whom he knows. In this way, our good will be multiplied because our good will include the good of others. And I want you to know how happy your letters are making me. How glad I am that you are using the lessons that we are sending you. And please remember this. You do not need to wait, for each lesson is complete within itself. And as you apply the instructions in each one of these lessons to your everyday living, you will soon discover that something begins to happen. You will come to know that you really are using a power greater than you are, and you are using it in faith and in confidence, and I hope with great enthusiasm, for I cannot think of any other adventure in life equal to the adventure of faith. The thought for our meditation today is one of the most helpful of all the sayings of Jesus. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. 
and I know that thou hearest me always. There is no doubt or uncertainty here, only gratitude and joy. As we think these thoughts of Jesus after him, each placing them in his own words, let us see if we too cannot say, I know that thou hearest me always. I am now making known my request with thanksgiving because I believe that the law of good, which is a law of love, will act on my faith and bring into my experience and into the experience of those whom I love the good we all so greatly desire. I am not praying for anything specific, but I am affirming that divine intelligence leads me into pathways of peace, of happiness, of health, and of success in my everyday living. I am lifting up my whole thought in enthusiasm and in expectancy and in joy to the outpouring of the divine spirit. Therefore, I expect everything in my life and in the lives of of those whom I love to come under divine guidance. And as I send out my thought of love to the whole world, I expect it to return to me multiplied. And as I wish good for everyone, I expect that this same good will return to my personal experience. I do believe in the availability of divine power, and I believe in the intimate nearness of the one perfect spirit. I do desire that this spirit shall influence my every act, because I know that only good can come from God. Mm -hmm. 